we're going to organize this today as follows. Uh, I'm going to just do a short introduction. I know we have a very compressed time frame. We've got a lot of good information we hope to get out. And we're going to have uh, Dr. Cordy Dunn Lewis will be our first presenter. We're going to make a quick computer change. And then uh, we'll, we'll go from there. And then we'll have uh, the next one will be Expectations on Body Composition and Body Image Change by Brett Comstock. And then we'll have Extreme Conditioning, today's fitness arena for women, which uh, Tim DeSavick will be doing the third talk. I'm really excited about this, uh, this particular symposium today. My exposure with the uh, Women's Health Initiative and the work we've done with women started way back in the early 90s. And it was based on uh, this, this particular act, the Equity Act, back in 1983, 93 rather, put out by Congressman Schroeder, uh, Snow, and Slaughter. And it availed us uh, over my time uh, to have a federal grants relative to understanding women's health and understanding how resistance training can play a role in that. And I think it allowed for us to understand a lot more than had been done at the time. And this was a very comprehensive act across the board. If you ever get the opportunity, you can read it. But it really allowed uh, more information to come out. Remember, uh, Title IX was way back in 1972. And uh, it, it's really an amazing phenomenon. And although we've come a long way, we still have a long way to go to understand some of the underlying mechanisms and some of the things that really are going on in women as it relates to their health, performance, fitness, and the different things that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, one of the studies I always like we did from this Women's Health Initiative Federal Grant is we did look at, uh, for example, hypertrophy in women. We found that, in fact, the potential for women to have upper body hypertrophy was much greater than what their lower body potential was, and it's mostly due to the fact that two things. Number one, women typically don't use their upper body. Number two, they never lift heavy. So we were dealing with a lot of things with regard to the fear of lifting, fear of getting big. Uh, and I know tomorrow my historical talk, I'll talk a little bit more about the progression of how things really occurred over the last four decades to really understand the, this particular modality and how it really goes. But I think the key thing is, is there's many ways to get to an end point, but you can't deny uh, some of the aspects relative to muscle recruitment, size people, even though there are some ridiculous reviews in response to it are clearly false. You have to understand that well, some of these things have been people have used their lifetime to study. But in this case, you can see the positive benefits. And along with the hypertrophy of muscle, which translates into bone and connective tissue. Then the other thing is, is that we know that bone health is important. And Courtney will be going through more of this. But you're at a risk if you're a woman. There's 10 million American women. And about 8 million, 80% are women that have osteoporosis. We know the, the statistics relative to one in two women by age of 50 will break a bone. <coughs> Women's risk of breaking a hip is equal to the defined risk of breast cancer and ovarian cancer, how it relates to morbidity, mortality. And in American College of Sports Medicine, we talk about exercise and medicine, but then we have to look at what type of exercise we're talking about in a total conditioning program to really understand how we can positively <coughs> affect things. If you look at body image, uh, there are some neat quotes, and I think uh, Brett will look at some of this stuff. But, you know, we're into the uh, aspect of women's image and what they think. A couple quotes here by one of the Ralph Lauren models. You know, it's not a good example to see my pic this picture. Uh, every young woman is going to look, think this is normal, and it's, it's really not. And I saw my face in this super steely skinny girl, which is not me. <laughs> And I think a lot of times we have that and with the extreme programs and a lot of different things you can see on the right, there's a healthy way to lose weight and good body image. And the one thing you don't want to do that we did in some of our diet nutrition programs is lose muscle. And with extreme dieting and things like this without weight training and without proper nutrition, you basically lose muscle. And that's really a contraindication for really positive health benefits. And finally, uh, we live in the world, somebody asked me something, I'll talk more tomorrow, but we know how to weight train today. We know the principles, but it's clouded in the marketing, the fads, 
and all the different things that are around the money-making industry to try to gain a niche and to make money. So the reality of really sound principles that people have been looking at for over 100 years and have now validated are being messed up by contextual science, as we correct, by, by all different types of advertising campaigns. You know, I wish if I was a billionaire, $2 billion, I would start having ads on TV. I would start putting out things that are correct to spend the money on, because maybe I wouldn't be interested in making money. But in those cases, that's not the way it works in today's world. So we got to put things in the proper context of how it can be properly done, what relates to the proper exercise prescription, and in fact, how we can then see the benefits that really occur. And this takes people that can think, people that are conscious of what the underlying science is, and basically hold true to the facts and not to the mythologies that are out there and have really been a burden on our science for the last 50 years. And I'll talk a little bit more about that tomorrow. So without start, oh, here's one thing we want to show you. All the short rest, high intensity programs. Uh, I'm talking to the people, you know, did the P90X and the, and the uh, CrossFit and everything else. They got a lot of that stuff from our early work on rest periods because the perception is when you cut the rest periods down, but look at the, keeps you awake, right? <laughs> what, what happens is that if you look at the treadmill exercise, you get this tremendous adrenergic response. And the other thing that you see, and we'll talk a little bit more about this, what you have is a dopamine reaction. And where you get this kind of this mythology, this addiction, comes the same reason you have gaming addiction and things like this. It's a dopamine-regulated phenomenon that hits the limbic system. Now, if you don't get hurt and you basically do it properly, this, these are what are called metabolic workouts. So the bottom line is there's an underlying physiology or biology that predisposes people's understanding and how they feel. I know one of the posters on things we're working on right now, there's a great disconnect between perception and recruitment of tissue. You can feel you're going max. You can feel that you're basically going very hard and you're exercising, you're sweating, you're tired, but yet as the late Dr. Dudley showed many years ago, you may have only be exercising 20 to 40 percent of the muscle. So the, there's a disconnect between your perceptual reality and the reality of motor unit recruitment, which based on Henneman's size principle is very much laid down. And we'll have new research coming out on that as well uh, to actually demonstrate that. So again, it's clouded by people that say, well, all you do is lift weights, lift light, you, go, you just go to failure. It doesn't work. When you look at the data, it doesn't work. So again, a lot of these different things we gotta keep track of. And uh, again, the adrenergic effect of a short rest program here in this study, uh, you look at the red lines are max treadmill tests, unbelievably high. Five minutes after, you got an exponential decline. You can imagine what it was right after. So anyway, I have spent a career trying to look at the underlying biology of these different programs, quantifying the different types of paradigms to be able to quantify resistance exercise. And I think today what I'm excited about is get a little bit of the, of the piece of information on these different areas that are so important for women's health and optimizing weight training programs. Remember, we know how to do it, but we are living within all the static background of today's commercial world. So with that, I'm going to make the computer change and ask uh, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Lewis to come up and make the presentation, the first presentation. <coughs> Thank you very much for all attending. I'm excited that you're here today. Hang in there. It'll be a bumpy ride, but we'll get through it, okay? okay.